Hello and welcome to the M2201 course on metric topology. I'll be posting every Wednesday uh, the videos for the whole week on, you, on my uh, YouTube channel. And there will be lecture notes uh, which will be available on the website. I'm still working on them, so I will be updating them from time to time. This year, I changed a little bit from last year because I removed the part on general topology because we have a course devoted to general topology uh, next year, M3315. Okay, so what is topology? Yeah, I'll try to give you an idea of what is the subject of topology. You remember in school, in geometry, you studied regular shapes like straight lines, triangles, circles, polygons, planes, ellipses, and so on. And at some point, you consider transformations that conserve these shapes, like central and axial symmetries, rotations, translations, homotices. So here's an example. This is a kind of rotation and the translation okay so we transform abc the triangle abc into another triangle abc a prime b prime c prime but now what if we allow more general shapes and more general elastic transformations that can distort these objects like twisting bending squeezing stretching but we don't break them okay these transformations are called continuous. So intuitively, a continuous function can always think of a function as being a transformation, a geometric transformation that takes an object into another object. As long as the transformation or distortion does not break the object, it's called continuous. So we can, for example, distort a triangle ABC into another shape, a triangle shape A prime B prime C prime, but it's a little bit distorted. I can make also I can make it look more like a circle, and I can actually transform it into a circle, and I can go back also without breaking the object. Okay, so this is an example of what we'll call homeomorphism. Okay, so we have to keep in mind that uh, so. But we can, instead of working with just figures in the plane or space, we can work more generally with figures in n-dimensional space okay, that we cannot picture, unfortunately. But we can study them. We can study shapes in Rn. Okay? And we can also still uh, deal with more general situations. Instead of working in Rn, we can work in what we call metric spaces or topological spaces. Topological spaces are generalizations of metric spaces, which are themselves generalizations of n-dimensional space. So we can say, if you want a quick definition, we can say that topology is the study of continuous transformations or the study of continuity in a general context. So we are not we are not obliged to just deal with figures in the plane. We can deal with very general uh, objects, and actually, a topological space can be anything uh, you can imagine. It's not necessarily regular. So it's a very broad generalization. So you can, we can say that topology is a broad kind of geometry, if you like. And this is why topology is sometimes called rubber sheet geometry, because we allow elastic transformations. OK. Now, in this course, we shall focus on only on metric spaces. Because there will be a, an optional course, Math uh, 3315, which is devoted to topological spaces. <clears throat> okay, so we split. But I have to say that uh, this way of proceeding has some advantages. Because if we first understand metric spaces, then it will be easier for us to understand topological spaces. Okay, because in a metric space, we have the notion of what you call a distance. 
okay and we this is what we shall do in the next videos now in topology there is uh, an important concept called homeomorphism. What is a homeomorphism? Intuitively, at least. So I will explain everything in details later. But I'm trying to give you an idea of what is the object, what, what do we study in topology? In a group theory or vector space theory, there's the fundamental concept of isomorphism. So for example, two groups are isomorphic if they have, this, if they have the same algebraic structure. So we can identify them. I will not give a lot of examples, but in topology, the, analog the analogous concept is, as we said, the concept of homeomorphism. A homeomorphism is a continuous bijection whose inverse is also continuous. So continuity for us here, at, uh, loosely speaking, is some transformation that does not break the object. So as I, as we saw in the figure, last figure, a circle, an ellipse, a square, a triangle are all homeomorphic because, because you can distort one of them into the other without breaking it, and you can go back. So for a topologist, the, a circle, an ellipse, a square, a triangle are, the, are essentially the same object. They are equivalent, if you like. So a topologist does not distinguish between a circle and a triangle. Okay, and all these shapes are called a topological circle, and it's denoted by S1. Okay. However, as we shall see in chapter two, a line segment and the circle are not homeomorphic. We cannot transform. So, for example, if you intuitively just to explain this idea, we can we can bend a line segment to form a circle, but if you want to go back, we have to break the circle. So there is no homeomorphism between the two, so they are topologically distinct. And a fundamental problem of topology is the classification. Of course, we cannot classify all topological spaces because this is impossible. As because, and similarly, we cannot classify all groups up to isomorphism. But there is a special class of topological spaces called manifolds that you will study in geometry uh, that we can classify. In dimension two, this this is known for a long time now, but in higher dimensions, this is still an open problem. And the Poincaré conjecture that maybe you heard of in 2006 is related to this classification problem. So it's a hard problem, actually. And it's usually studied in algebraic topology. Now, one of the uh, applications of topology in analysis is that it can allow us to go from a local property to a global property. Now, I cannot explain what, exactly what do I mean by that now because I have to introduce a lot of concepts. But I can explain that by the end of the course once we have understood uh, the concepts of, connect, of connectedness, of compactness, and so on. So topology is very important in analysis. It's the foundation of it's the foundation of analysis. Okay, so it's a, actually, if you like, it's it's something between analysis and geometry. Okay. Now, topology has three big subfields: general topology or point set topology, that we will start studying in this course and in the next year in the course M three three one five. There is the field of algebraic topology that this is a graduate course uh, that you will study uh, in fourth year. And there is the field of differential topology. We don't have any course here on differential topology because this is advanced. Uh, in order to understand algebraic topology, we have to understand first general topology. So general topology is a prerequisite. Although, historically, algebraic topology uh, was invented before general topology. So general topology was invented later in order to uh, give a meaning and to, give a, to, to, to make the algebraic topology more rigorous. So in this course, we shall study the basic language of topology, if you like. OK. <clears throat> now, here's the plan. Uh, of this course, we'll start 
with a very short chapter on preliminaries in the next video. Then we'll start studying metric spaces by defining the notion of ball, of distance, then balls. Uh, and uh, so there's a lot of jargon here, actually. It's, it's, it's the biggest chapter of the course, so it's, it's a little bit lengthy. But then chapters will become shorter. So the, sec the chapter two is about continuous functions and homeomorphisms. Okay, chapter three is about compactness, compact spaces, compact metric spaces in our case. Chapter four is about connectedness. And the last chapter is about complete metric spaces. Okay, so don't worry if chapter one will be a little bit lengthy and contains a lot of information because we need to, um, to introduce a, a big quantity of jargon before we understand continuity, compactness, connectedness, and so on. Now, uh, as I always say, uh, of course, this is, this is not an easy course, okay? It's a little bit considered as a hard course, but if you study regularly a little bit every day, you will find it easy, okay? But the biggest mistake that you can make is to start studying just one week or two weeks before the exam. It's, it's, a very, it's a very bad because you cannot digest uh, all this material in just two weeks. Okay. Now, of course, uh, um, <clears throat> besides uh, video lectures and lecture notes, we will be meeting uh, online using Zoom or something similar once every two weeks to answer your questions. But I would ask you to prepare well your questions because there's a lot of uh, time wasting in these meetings, okay? And you can download these videos actually and watch them several times, okay? So in order to profit from time, prepare well your, your questions. And of course, you can ask your questions by, by email, by sending me an email if you want a private communication. And you can also leave your uh, questions in the comment section below the video. And I may uh, also do a Q&A video to answer your questions, okay? Now, I will, uh, I will give you some references. I can tell you that the lecture notes and the video lectures are enough if you want to, um, uh, succeed in this course, uh, but you have to do the exercises, okay? So you cannot learn just by sitting and listening, okay? So you have to make your hands dirty. You have to solve problems. It's very important. You have to solve previous exams. The previous exams are generally not solved. The exercises are solved. I'll, solve, I'll be solving them, and there is there are written solutions, actually, but uh, the exams... Uh, I didn't write the solution for the exams because I want to keep something challenging uh, a little. So I don't want you to memorize solutions. I want you to think. Now, if you want to dig deeper, there are there is a wonderful textbook by James Munkris. It's uh, from MIT. It's a widely used textbook. It's called Topology. There's another book by Adams and Francois, Introduction to Topology, Pure and Applied. And there's a little bit old book by Steen and Siebach called Counter Examples in Topology. But this is only for those who want to dig deeper into topology. They are not required to succeed in this course. Okay? So this ends this uh, short introduction to the course. And uh, in the next video, I will start with chapter zero. So thank you for your attention.